In this follow-up video, I want to spend some time and expand on the previous example. In, one of, in the previous video, we generated a plot <clears throat> that looked something like this, and we introduced computer modern fonts, specifically computer modern Roman, so that our graphics that we generate in R looks very similar, at least in terms of font, than what we have in LaTeX. And then as part of that first video, we also showed how do you draw two overlapping histograms, each as a polygon, and then you can fold them in different ways so that you can actually see the overlap. Now, let's assume in this video that we want to add the estimated distributions uh, on top of these histograms so that we can actually just demonstrate that we've actually fitted the data and that, we, that we're not just claiming some distribution. So that's what this video will be about. Now, <clears throat> if I execute this command, and I do it a couple of times, at some point you will actually see that it complains that all of my values are not necessarily within the span of the breaks that I've defined. And you will actually get this um, if you run your code a couple of times. So what I'm going to do to change this and fix this is just to make our breaks slightly bigger. It will have no effect whatsoever on our graphic and every time that we actually generate it we will generate a new set of histograms. Right, so that's the one change. The other change is you may get annoyed with all of these warning messages and you do want to get rid of them. These two lines that we've introduced, font install and load fonts, are necessary the first time that you actually introduce computer model fonts. But from there onwards, you can actually just comment them out and you should be able to run your script with no warnings anymore. And you've called the library extra font, so you should be uh, fine. Now, what we've done initially is to generate X values, which we didn't use in the first video. So I'm just going to change this to generate values for us between one, uh, 0 and 50 in sequence in steps of 0 0.1. And this will generate 501 values for us. Now, <clears throat> let's just calculate the mean for, and I'll have to do that after, oops after we've generated these random values. So let's say the mean of one was the mean of y1, and we've done our exploratory analysis and know that these are normal distributions. And SD for our first distribution was the standard deviation of y1. And I'm going to do the same for mean two, is the mean of our second set of values and the second standard deviation I can calculate in the same way. Right, so if I execute these four lines, I can actually see that I do get this roughly about the same standard deviation and I get roughly the same mean values as what I have put into the random values that I've generated. I don't expect them to be 100% the same because these were randomly generated values. So essentially, this is my estimate for the random values that I've observed. And these Y1 and Y2 values may be what you've observed with your real data. Now, if I want to draw the fitted line on top of, for example, of this distribution, that's kind of what I, what I would expect. But the red line is the density line. It's not the frequency line. Uh, we'll have, we have to work with, with the, freq, uh, sorry, the densities here. Uh, and that is why I choose to visualize in my graph, although the frequency will look exactly the same, I visualize the density because I want to draw the fitted values uh, on here as well, or the fitted distribution on here. Now, never draw that by hand because you will lose all credibility. So how do we do that in, in R? 
Well, as you've, as you've seen, I actually want that to be a line. So let's call that fitted one. And the way in which I do that is to call the function dnorm and the d-norm will give me the density for a normal distribution at a specific point in x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it the vector of x values that I've generated up here. And I'm going to use the mean and the standard deviation of the estimates um, of my data. So I'm going to say x is x, mean is mean for the first one, Standard deviation is the standard deviation. And I will now have 501 fitted values. Uh, one fitted value or density value for every value of x. And I'm going to do the same down here. Fitted for my second distribution. and I can create a second vector of density values. Now in my plot, before drawing the box, I'm going to add my fitted distribution lines, and I'm going to add them as lines. X will take on the values X, and the first line Y will take on the values fitted one. I'm going to make my line width a little bit wider and I'm going to change my color to red. And if I now execute this code and I go back to my graph, indeed there is my fitted normal distribution of the first set of data. And I can do the same for the second. to make this black, change this to black too because I like working with monochrome figures and rather change my line type to let's say um, 5, 2 and now what that the line type actually does. It tells you if you want to draw a dotted line, how long should the line segments be and how long should the, the gaps be in between. So if I execute that, I will actually see two different lines and now it is monochrome and I've got no problem whatsoever um, to zoom into this graphic and I will never have plotting problems on um, or have visualization problems if somebody doesn't happen to have access to a color printer. Well, you can play around and you can actually add a legend um, to report the values for you as well.